Hello. Now I've been doing some testing on making a component and I chose to use aluminium for the test piece and pretty much I've made a real mess of my mill. So I decided I really needed to clean it up before I did the actual components or components, there's eight of them, and they're going to be made of brass. So I thought, right, well, everything's a real mess, so I thought I'd clean it up. So cleaned the um, mill up and then felt quite bad about not cleaning the lathe up. So I started cleaning that up. Right, I'm in the middle of um, cleaning up my um, lathe, which, there we are, that's what it is. Um, and the cross slide, I mean, the, the lathe was getting grubby. It's been a year since I've given it a good clean, so... Anyway, took the tool holder off, um, and the back of the cross slide, you've got the bearings, which are here. Let me just zoom you in a bit. Uh, the back bearing has got a cup that covers it and there's a bearing just inside there as well. Now obviously when you're this far, uh, which normally is not very often because the tool head's right out here, um, but you'd be drilling or something like that, but you can get a lot of swarf go down in here and on it. So I've cleaned all this out inside. but. Um, this bearing really not that well protected and there's no lubricant get to it either. Uh, luckily there's no damage to it but it was a bit shitty. So I've cleaned it out, re-greased it, reassembled it. Um, right, at this point I'll interrupt myself and tell you how I did it. Um, first thing I did was undid the carriage uh, nut which is a Allen key bolt which is right in the middle of the cross slide. Here you can see the carriage nut. Um, I wound the thread back and of course the um, cross slide is right forward. But I also wanted a bit more movement on the cross slide so what I did was took off the rear nut which is just um, a castellated nut and it's just held down with a little tab that bends over and just locks it in place. Um, behind that is the cover and the bearing. Once that's off, you can then take off the bearing holder, which is held on with two bolts, one on the left, one on the right. So once I'd done that, I decided I needed to take off the drive handle. Now this has obviously got a gear on the back of it, which attaches to the gearbox for um, cross slide automatic travel. Now. You've got no need to remove this, as I found out. But in removing the handle, I did find that uh, the bronze gear really was quite dry. Uh, I presume that there's really little or no oil lubrication on it while you're travelling around and doing things by hand. So when I reassembled that, I put grease on it. But it's up to you. You don't really need to touch it. That said, it will probably make putting the threaded cross shaft back in a lot easier without the handle in place. Now the threaded cross shaft doesn't come all the way out, unfortunately, because it hits the splash guard at the back. And it's the same with the cross slide table. It won't come off because it hits the back splash tray. So, but between moving the cross threaded shaft and sliding the cross slide to and fro, I managed to get into everything pretty much and give it a good cleaning. Now, cleaned the bearings up, reassembled. After that, I put the threaded rod in and attached the uh, bearing cap and assembled all the bearings on the end. And this allowed me to uh, adjust the end play on the two sets of bearings. Because there was no weight on it at all, I could adjust it nicely so there was no end play and the bearing wasn't too tight and pinching up. Um, the bearing cap I then attached to the back of the saddle, but I only did it loosely. I then attached the handle at the front 
again loosely attach the cross slide to this nut and push the cross slide or drove the cross slide to and fro making sure everything was smooth and I did wound fully back did up the rear bearing carrier and then fully forward and then I did up the handle carrier again I'd only just pinched them up before I did them up tight just wanted to make sure that everything slid to and fro nicely under hand travel but obviously I want to put a cover over this because um, it really needs to protect it and stop Swarf going down in there so that's what I'm doing now simple straightforward tin cover folded up um, it's 120 across and I've got a drop of about 32 mil maximum on each side so I want to try and get it tightish. Um, I might still drill and tap a couple of holes in this to um, hold it down. I haven't quite made my mind up yet. So anyway, I've got some steel, a um, little bit rusty, but I'm going to cut that, get that cleaned up, and I'll bring you back in a minute. Right, we're back. Um, this is a bit of steel I've got. As you can see, this side's a little bit grotty. This side's cleaned up quite nicely. Um, I've just got like a, uh, where is it, I've got like a scotch bright pad which goes on um, on your angle grinder, and that's all I did it with. So that side I'm going to have up, uh, that side I'll have down, I mean, it's smooth but it's just, you can just see the, so I've got one line scribed on there, you can see that, so I'm going to make that bend first of all, what I've done it's the right width, so I've got 120 plus 32, 32, but I've got to allow a little bit for a bend. So um, I've marked it in 30, and I'm going to bend on that one, and uh, we'll see how that comes out. So I'm going to use my little Warco. Um, I forget what size this is now. It's bend, isn't it? So I'm sure this is a 12-inch machine, yeah. So, um, I don't use this that often. Um, it's got the ring rollers at the top as well. So, rollers, folder, and the shears at the bottom. So, it's a bloody heavy bit of kit. It's just about all I want to pick up. Um, and normally it's just stored underneath the bench, so it gets a bit dirty and dusty. So I oil it up every time I put it away, and of course I've got to clean it up every time I want to use it, but you know um, right so bend right so I've got my mark lined up that's I've just basically put this on the table put a pen up underneath and pulled it to and fro so there's my mark now that was 32 mil, so I'm a little bit off on the width there. Um, obviously, this drop, I thought the bend would actually take that out, um, but it hasn't. It's still 30 mil that. So my calculations of adding a little bit on to account for the bend hasn't worked out. Anyway, so that's where I need to bend. I'm going to bend it, and then I'll cut off what I don't need. So I started with the sheared edge anyway, so. Right, second bend. So let me just offer that up on the plate and we'll see what that looks like. Right, fits on there quite nicely. So I've um, marked off the extra uh, length that I've got because it is a bit too long. Not by much actually. It's worked out quite nicely. Um, 
I've just marked it with a pen. I'm just going to try and shear it actually. I cut this up with an angle grinder, but um, I might just try and shear it. Uh, this is one mil steel, and it's probably putting this poor little thing to the limit. Now, I don't know what the specification for this is in steel, but um, I reckon I can probably just about get that in there as well. Right, so there's the, um, the finished tray. And I've got a little mark on there, which is the right place. It just covers the cross slide fixing. Now, I, I meant to put this rougher edge on the um, other end, but that's the way it's bent up. Um, I've got my rubber protector here, so the drop on this side has to be a little bit shorter. This side, perfect. And um, mine's to and fro, lovely. And that's the cross slide right over uh, towards you. And right back, it should just touch this. There we are. Just donk. That's it. Now I was thinking of fixing this down, but I don't think there's any need, it fits on nice and snug. So, rather pleased with that. That's a um, simple little job, done. Oh, I've had a few people ask about this apron too. Let me bring you in for a better view. Um, it's bolted on um, a little frame, I might have some photographs of it. It's just a bit of... Um, aluminium angle that's been machined off either end to leave just a step in the middle and it bolts onto the uh, travelling steady point so it's relatively easy to straight take off um, either the three bolts just to get rid of this or if you want to take the whole thing off there's just two allen bolts up underneath um, and basically I, I decided this was all that was needed to um, protect the ways. Um, I've seen people with lots of concertina things that go up and down on, on the front here. But I can't see the point because if you're this far away you're not going to be machining anyway over here. Uh, the main area you're going to be damaging personally I think is right underneath the cutting tools. So and cutting tools are generally speaking just there. Yes yeah, so there you go up under there and you can see that it's just machined to fit on there, just to hold that. And it's just a bit of, um, uh, I'm not quite sure what this is actually, it's a polypropylene kind of stuff. These are just some very short bolts, because obviously they want, only want to go into the aluminium. Um, and they just hold it down and pinch down, just keep it out of the way. So it just protects the area directly under where you're working and at worst that's how it folds up underneath the chuck. There you go, better view for you. It doesn't chuck the chuck, so the four jaw just rubs on it but that's only when you're right this far forward and you're never really this far forward. So there we go. Right, just a bit more cleaning to do, and I'll see you in the next video.